I'm about ready to give you the secret that's going to unlock your full potential as a painter. Whether you're a beginner, a hobbyist, or a seasoned pro, after you watch this video, you're going to have a full understanding of how to execute the perfect paint job. Right there is good. I'm going to actually dial my fan pattern back a little bit because I want it to be a little bit smaller. Not that small. And I'm going to turn my air pressure down. I can tell too much air pressure. About like that is what I want it to be. So let's go ahead and I'm not going to pull the trigger all the way, okay? Now you can control the amount of overspray, believe it or not, with your distance from the panel and how much you pull this trigger. Now I'm not going to pull the trigger all the way. I'm going to spray a little bit closer. We're going to get less overspray because of that. See this? I'm going to move pretty quickly. Okay, that's all I want for sealer. It's nice and atomized out on the edge. I'm, okay, we're going to mix up some base coat. Okay, this is the Spray IQ disposable cup system. Okay, this mixes up two to one, so we're going to find our two to one ratio right here. Port to the three. I don't, we're going to go to the one column and we're going to go to the three for reducer. That gives you a two to one ratio because you're only putting this much reducer as opposed to two parts of paint. I'll give a little quick stir here. So I lift it up, make sure it's all sealed. And it wasn't. There we go, now it's sealed. Put on our collar. Twist. All right, now we have our base coat. Make sure nothing's leaking. Before I put on my mask, let's talk about setting your gun up for base coat. Your gun setup for your base coat is just like sealer. I like to spray with my fan pattern wide open and then a quarter turn back on my fan pattern. The only reason I do that is because sometimes if you open your fan pattern wide open, the pattern gets distorted a little bit. So I like to narrow it down back just a little bit. Then as far as my fluid volume, I'm going to go three turns out on my fluid volume for base coat. So we turn it all the way in. I've got my little mark here. We'll go one full turn, two full turns, three full turns. Now we're set. As far as my air pressure, I like it around 15 to 20 PSI. We're at 25. There's 20. And that's perfect. Nice fan pattern. Now, before we spray this, we want to, I'm going to tack this off because I've got some, just a little bit of dust from the sealer. There's, only, there's very few things you have to worry about with your base coat unless you get into high metallic finishes. You want to make sure it goes, you're using less air pressure to spray your base coat. You want a wetter finish on your base coat, maybe not the first pass or the first coat, but after that, you want a wetter base coat. This is going to help eliminate modeling or meta metallics laying funny in your base coat. There's other things you can do to prevent that, but that's another video. Let's tack this off and let's go ahead and spray our first coat of base. This is dry now. We've let this set up enough. See how I'm wiping off some dust here? It's not real critical. I mean, if I were to spray over this, it would probably be fine. But I like to start with a nice clean surface. Okay, we're gonna put one coat on. We'll let it flash off for 10 minutes and then we'll apply a second coat. I'm gonna overlap 80% as I make my passes. That's the first coat. After 15 minutes, we let that paint flash off. We're ready for our second coat of base. Don't try and cover your sealer all in one coat. Let it flash off for about 15 minutes, apply a second coat, and I am gonna apply a third coat here, a lighter coat, and I'll blend it out into the rest of the bedside. 
The only thing I do to apply a lighter coat is just increase my distance from the panel just a little bit. That's all you have to do. We've got our clear coat ready. We're spraying U-Pole clear. It's all mixed up and ready to go. Okay, let's talk about setting up this gun for clear coat. You want to think about this gun like a puzzle. In order to solve a puzzle, you have to have all the pieces together. So what are the pieces to solve the puzzle of getting a beautiful looking clear coat, a flat, high gloss clear that you can be proud of? The pieces are the fluid volume, the air pressure, your speed, and your distance. Those are the four key things that are gonna solve the puzzle. Fan pattern is important, but it's not a part of the puzzle. But as far as your pad, fan pattern, you wanna open it up wide open when you're spraying clear coat. Close your fluid volume all the way, okay? Mine has, a, I marked it on the top here. This particular gun doesn't have a notch in the knob, but I've marked it. I'm gonna do two complete turns on my fluid volume. This is gonna give you a thin coat of clear. Now you may have to bump that up a little bit, but I'd rather you bump it up a little bit than get orange peel or runs. I know that this particular gun atomizes the clear very well at 30 PSI. Most guns are around 30 PSI. I know the Iwata Kiwami 4, 20, I like to run that at about 28. That's just a personal preference, but if you start out at 30, you're gonna be good. So I'm gonna pull my trigger, and right now I'm at 32 PSI. When I pull my trigger, when I pull my trigger all the way, it drops down to 30, okay? The next part of the puzzle is your speed and your distance. Your speed and your distance are gonna directly affect the appearance of your clear coat. Close to the panel, you get more material. Farther away, you're gonna get less. If you spray fast, you're gonna get less material. And if you spray slow, you're gonna get more material. So you wanna find what works well for you to optimize that clear coat finish. Well, let's start off by what it's going to look like if you're spraying too far away, okay? So, let's say you're doing 8 to 10 inches away, about here, and we're going to do a consistent speed. I'm going to pull the trigger fully, and we're going to see how it looks. Okay, see how it's dry? Can you see how it's a little dry? It's atomizing well. There's either not enough material coming out of the gun, or you're not close enough. Now. If I move in a couple inches to four or five inches, look how much smoother that finish is, okay? Now if I continue down and I'm gonna spray close to the panel faster, and I'm spraying really fast here. And look how smooth that is, okay? So your distance from the panel can affect how that clear coat's laying down. A lot of people say a low CFM gun is slow, but you saw how fast I went right there. And it's a beautiful looking finish. It's perfect for the amount of orange peel that's in it. It's got a nice finish. So let's go ahead and spray this panel I'm going to back up a little bit because I don't want to run it that close, so I'm going to open this up another half a turn. So we're at two and a half turns out, 30 PSI. We're going to run at a quick pace and four to five inches away. Simply put, the four things that are going to affect your clear coat the most are your air pressure, your fluid volume, your speed, and your distance. Now, there are other variables but those are the main things that you wanna be concerned about. The best way for you to find your own spraying technique is to set your gun up first, do 30 PSI on your air pressure, two to two and a half turns out on your fluid volume, and then you can adjust from there, and then your fan pattern wide open. Then you can change your spraying technique to get the best finish possible. Just by adjusting your speed and your distance, you're gonna affect how that clear coat lays on the panel. And ultimately, it's gonna help you understand how these four things work together when you're applying clear coat. 
If you use these gun settings and set up a test panel and practice with it a little bit, change your speed and distance and see how that affects your clear coat and how it lays down, it's going to help you out and it's going to make you a better painter in the end. And it's going to give you a better understanding of how all these things work together for your finished product. Now I was overlapping about 75%. That's the first coat. We let our clear coat flash off for about 15 minutes and now we're ready to apply our second coat. Talk a little bit about the gun I'm using today. This is the Aero Pro A610. This is an updated version of the R500. It's an updated appearance actually. The R500 is manufactured by Rongpeng, R-O-N-G-P-E-N-G. -E it is a low volume, low pressure paint gun that uses very little CFMs to operate at full capacity. So it uses 3.5 to 3.9 CFMs of air. This is why I really like this particular gun because it can be used with a small compressor if you're painting an entire vehicle or if you're doing spot repair. You're not gonna have any fluctuation in your air pressure or very little depending on the air compressor you're using. So a 20 to 30 gallon compressor that produces about six to seven CFMs is gonna work really well with this gun. Now I'm not concerned about air consumption but the other thing this gun does very well, because it uses less air, it's gonna produce less overspray. This is what's most important to me because I'm spraying in an open garage without a paint booth. And it also has great transfer efficiency because it uses less air. You're gonna use less materials and that's gonna save you money in the long run. And as you can see, it produces a nice looking finish. Um, I'm not doing anything special here, you know. I'm not the best painter in the world, but I can tell you that this gun is not very difficult to use. And if you follow the steps that I've talked about here in your gun settings and how to attack clear coat, you're gonna have great results. Okay, it's the next day. Let's check out our paint job from yesterday. This is the black truck we painted with the AeroPro A610 or the R500. We use the U-Pull clear coat. It has a few little particles of dust. We're gonna cut and buff this. You don't have to be intimidated by spraying clear coat. Use the gun settings I talked about. Practice adjusting your finish with your speed and your distance. I think you're going to find it helpful, and it's going to make you a better painter. Listen, I appreciate each and every one of you watching. We'll see you next time on Garage Noise.